Hello and welcome to this short video on the SQL Query Tuner. The SQL Query Tuner is a SQL Server only product and it's designed to do basically three things. It will let you profile your database, it will let you tune a SQL query, and it will let you run a load test. The load test in of itself does not produce any results and it's best used in conjunction with the profiler which we'll, which we'll see shortly. I'm going to go ahead and start a profiling session now on this uh, box labeled 114 and to do that I'll simply click this icon at the toolbar called New Profiling Session. As the profiling starts to run we will see any activity that's going on in our database however in this case since this is a database simply running in a VM on my local environment I'm going to run a load test to simulate a load on the system. I'll do that by choosing File New, SQL Load, and this will open up a dialog where I can paste a SQL query in it. I'm going to go over to my Project Explorer and I'm going to choose this SSQuery-3 SQL and I'm going to select all of this and I'll copy it and I'm going to paste it into my SQL load test. The load test will run for an elapsed time of either hours and minutes or the number of executions or you can also press this icon down here in the lower right hand corner when the load test is running this will be red. I'm going to run this load test for we'll run it for three minutes and I'm going to click start. Once I've started the load test we'll start to see content come into the chart window and we'll see the load that that query is placing on our system. Here we can see that our load test has run. Uh, we can obviously see where the load test started and stopped and now once it's over we're not seeing any more content come through in the profiling session. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop this profiling session and we're going to switch over to a profiling session that was run earlier. Um, you can save the profiling sessions out as .oar files and we can refer back to those uh, in the future if we wish to do so. So here's a profiling session where I ran a series of load tests. You can see here there's four discrete sections in this profiling session. And I wanted to find out which one of these queries, these are all different queries, I wanted to find out which one was going to be uh, giving the best performance or the best improvement based on a tuning session. So we can isolate any of these segments simply by holding the left mouse button down and dragging it across and now the results we see here are only for the SQL that was occurring during that slice. So here, uh, if we take a look at this query, and if you click on it, uh, you can open that up in a window below. Um, we have a, uh, in our from clause for client transaction, we have a, a another part of the query where it says with index client transaction PK. Okay, well, that was the results of this load test, what we see here. So here's another option. Same query, but it's written slightly different. You notice that in the from clause, that with uh, index is no longer present. And we see that there's been a big decrease in the amount of CPU that's being used. So if we scroll down, um, it also has an option force order hint at the end of the query. If we take a look at our third option here and we expand this, um, we can see that that force option hint is no longer here. So that was the results we got from that. Well, I want to go back to the actual query that we started with and that's right here. So this query was actually uh, run in this time slice, the original query here. But if we take a look at this, we notice that there's a little warning sign here. And if we hover the mouse over that, it says Cartesian product that returns all the rows in all the tables listed in the query. Well, that sounds bad in terms of query performance. So what I'm going to do is just click on this and it's going to ask me if I want to add some join criteria. 
So I would like to do that. So I double click on that and we see that it modified our query to add some more join information. Now this query was run in this time slice for our load test. And if I hover over that or select that slice and then come in here, we can see here where we had the additional uh, join information added. Okay, so that are those are a couple of ways uh, that you can use the profiler in conjunction with a load test. The load test or the profiler is going to give you all the information about your instance. So it is not initially database specific. However, there is a filter up here, so I can filter by application, command, database, host name, NT domain, NT username, net address, or username. Okay, so if I wanted to just filter out information that I was getting from my load test, which is being run by SQL Query Tuner, I can filter by application, and then I have the list of applications that are running that will appear in this dropdown. If you select the Apply Filter button or the Refresh button, it will take out everything except whatever you have selected in this filter. Now, in this case, as I said earlier, the only thing that's running on this is, is the load test because uh, it is a uh, database that's running in a VM in my environment. So this doesn't have uh, an obvious effect uh, just in running this. We saw a couple little bumps here change when, uh, when I went back to the full view. Um, but keep in mind, you can also uh, select a slice in time if you want, if you have a, see a big spike in uh, your database performance. And of course, you can isolate it by actual uh, database schema name as well. So if we were just profiling our database, let's say that we started with this query, and your worst performing query is always going to be at the top. So if we wanted to uh, start a tuning session based on this query, we can take a look at this if we select it, and I right-click in here, I can get an explain plan, or I can choose to tune it. If we look at the explain plan first, I'll give us a little bit more real estate here, uh, we can see things in here that kind of run up some red flags. We've got some table scans, uh, an index scan here, table scan here. Uh, there's some nested loops with the table scan at the bottom. And we can see some of these things that, are, uh, that have a high plan cost. Okay, So you can probably be pretty sure that if you're seeing table scans, that that might be a good candidate for a query that needs to be tuned. And by tuning, we're going to get a number of different options. So to start a tuning session, I can simply select Tune, and it will open up another tab here. And it will initially, uh, most of the time, it's going to initially process uh, this query a bit. Now, this one has already been tuned, so it, it already has that information. But you want to make sure that Generate Cases is selected perform detail analysis and execution iterations are all selected. And then you can click the run button and it will start tuning your query. I'm going to close this tab because we've already got a tuning session that we've run. Uh, and let me just pull one up here. So this is our original query that shows up here. And you can see I have those checkboxes selected. And it takes a few minutes to run, so we're not going to wait uh, during the video to watch this tuning job run. However, what I'm looking for is a situation where I have green bars on both sides, ideally. Now, you'll have to select these chevrons here to expand this. It won't automatically expand that for you. But my original query is here. And if I right-click on that, um, well, let me do it this way. I'm going to choose force order as my tuned query. Okay, That's one of the cases that we looked at up here. So if I select that and then I right click and I choose compare to parent, then we're going to get a side by side comparison of these two queries. Now here's the one with the index uh, primary key use and here's the one with the force order. Okay, That was an improvement. Uh, because based on these results, we had a, a significant improvement in uh, the cost compared to the parent, and the elapsed time was uh, half a second or so 
faster. Okay, And that's the kind of the result that we see here. So here was our original query that had the index. This was the one that used um, the force order. Okay, And you can see that our CPU time went to almost nothing for this. So if I highlight the entire slice here, uh, we can see that there's just a couple little bumps here that hardly even show up. Uh, with respect to to my CPU. The SQL tab also shows us some more information, number of executions, average elapsed time, events and sessions, and then any procedures that might be being used. Okay, But that in of itself um, is worth looking into some more. So we ran another one of the options and came up with this where there really wasn't a significant difference between the original query and this query. Um, but then if you take into consideration that warning sign here, we chose to implement that and that's when we got a significant improvement in the overall uh, cost uh, in, in CPU utilization for that query. So those are just a few of the ways um, that you can use the query tuning tool in conjunction with the load test to verify results of a tuning job. Um, we can also profile our database. Obviously, if there's activity going on in your database, you're going to see the worst performing SQL here at the top. Okay. Um, if we take a look at our tuning job, there's also some more information here under the analysis tab that is worth looking at. So I'm going to click on analysis. This is our original query here, and you can see that we have this uh, index in use here. Um, and I want to go through the index analysis. So if I select, and these are color coded, if I select a gray colored index, the explanation for that is here in the right-hand panel. This index has no effect on statement execution. Okay, those are what that's what the gray means. The blue, this index is defined on a column present in the predicate, so it could be used by the database optimizer when you run the statement. In this case, however, it wasn't. There's also green ones. It says this index is used by the optimizer when you run the statement. And then finally, we have three orange colored indexes here. And if I select one of these, it gives us an explanation. It says table broker is scanned via a full table scan, but it has a filter where broker last name is equal to Smith on it. So we suggest implementing this index. Now, those are the table scans that we saw in the explain plan. So you have the option also to improve this query if you don't want to change the code or maybe you can't, maybe it's a third-party application, but you do have control over your database, so you have control over indexes. I can select these three indexes and right-click and choose Create Indexes, and now it's going to give me the DDL to create those indexes. You still have to be cognizant as a DBA whether creating these indexes may cause more overhead than they're worth. And that's only a decision that only you can make uh, in regard to your environment and how often these queries might be run. I could also open these if I don't want to create them on the fly. I can open those in an SQL editor and save them out. Um, if you follow whatever your process you normally have for implementing changes to a database, especially in a production system. But we do give you the option to execute these uh, as long as you're connected to that database and have those permissions. So this was our original query, but we also have available to us the information and index analysis for all the cases that were generated. So you can see here there's quite a long list. So let's just take a look at force order, for example. That was one of the options. And when you select this, and you can click refresh, it's going to go back out and reconnect to that database and reparse those column statistics. So this will take a minute to run. And now we see we have some results. Now in this case, it you might expect that it's recommending the same three indexes. There could be options in some of these uh, different cases that were generated where an index, may, creating new indexes may not be required. 
um, but you're going to have to go through uh, the most promising of those to see if that's what it is. And obviously, you know, we have a large number here. You're not going to go through all of those. Your overview information should be a guide as to which one of these options are worth looking into. Okay, because that index creation is going to have some effect on the results that we're given here. Uh, those indexes are created dynamically to test the execution uh, and, and cost of, of those queries. So once those ex once the query case is finished running, then those indexes are, are dropped that were created dynamically. So um, they were just there and gone so that we could uh, get some better information about uh, how we could improve performance. Um, we can see information up here. There was 486 cases generated, and we have it shows us information here that's also color-coded in relation to our index analysis. So that wraps up this demo of SQL Query Tuner. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact IDERA at idira.com. Thank you.